Oh, he caught me brushing up on my skills. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, everyone. Uh, this is Marketing While Muslim, episode seven. And this is the show where the three of us, the founders of Muslim CEO, uh, myself, Amin, Muhammad, and Faisal, uh, we flex our marketing skills, right? We uh, set ourselves a challenge to solve uh, some kind of marketing challenge problem, uh, kind of live, you know, unedited, uh, right here on the uh, episode. Uh, we, we do a video version where you can see our lovely faces and our screen that we're, you know, taking notes on. And uh, we also have the audio version if you just want to listen along um, to kind of see where we go with this. Um, every week, uh, one of us comes up with a secret kind of uh, challenge for us. And we see what we can do within one hour to uh, come at, you know, come with a good outcome. So this week, it is Mohammed who's uh, coming at me and Faisal with a, a problem that we've never heard of before. So, uh, Mohammed, what's the challenge this week? Okay, so I thought I'd change it up. Assalamualaikum, by the way, guys. I thought I would do something uh, very different this week. So we've kind of been focusing a lot on marketing, specifically the techniques and this and that. So today, I want you to uh, modify it a little bit. I want you to bring some realness to it. So I'm going to give you a real life example. Uh, and I think it's going to benefit a lot of different type of people out there. Probably not the type of people we usually benefit, but inshallah, that will be helpful as well. So what I was thinking is that right now, I have a cousin who basically uh, is into marketing. He studied marketing at university. He's just completed his degree. By the way, he completed a three-year degree in two years. What a hero, right? Mashallah. Um, and he's someone that's kind of worked with us in the past as well. Um, so... What I want you to do is really kind of get you guys to tell us what you would do if you were in that position where you actually like marketing, you studied marketing, and now Corona's just hit while you graduate, right? So now it's like, okay, well, what are all the things that me as a student should be doing? Should I go and now do a master's? Should I now uh, focus on like finding a marketing job? Should I be doing something on the side. I want to do something on the side. So I don't just learn theory marketing. I learn more about marketing, what it really is and stuff. So I'm here now. Like, what do I do? Okay. This is definitely is different. This is a, like, is this, are you sure it's not the wrong podcast, bro? Like is, this isn't the <laughs> career podcast. You know that, right? Um, okay. So, so you're saying that we're going by the assumption there aren't many jobs out there. Is that it? Yeah, we're going through that. There's not many jobs out there. Let's mm. say you're in that situation. That's not an assumption, by the way. That is actually true. <laughs> yeah, that is true. I, I, um, I would actually apply for like 100 jobs and then maybe assume. <laughs> um, no, but, but, but I think I, I, I still think um, that there definitely will be positions there. Um, maybe not many, not many as usual. But you never know, right? Uh, I think there are some techniques you can use to uh, help, help, you know, up the favors, you know. Uh, and put, get things in your favor. Um, so, so, so I mean, let me let me give you some context to this stuff, right? Yeah. So, uh, let's call the brother Abdul, right? So, uh, brother Abdul is now kind of graduated, right? So, you know, part of part of him is thinking, well, you know, I've been looking into YouTube, I've been looking into all these things and everything. I will do the whole job application thing, right? That that's kind of standard. I'll do job application. Yeah. Um, what should I be learning about? What should I be doing? Uh, what should I be focusing on now overall? Because I'm going to be a marketer in Charlotte in my life. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think maybe you can kind of copy a little bit of what I did, perhaps, right? Because sure. my path was that I, I was self-taught marketing. So I didn't do a degree. I had a degree from a university, but not in marketing. And then I just was reading a lot of books, right? So he needs to, maybe that's the first stage, is he needs to read um, some of these classics like um, Seth Godin, like, um, uh, what's that? Some of these really good copywriting ones like Eugene Schwartz and uh, Joseph Letterman and these are really good copywriting ones. Um, what are, I mean, I mean, even, even that is a good, good one. Why not? Um, that's four hour work week just for the audio guys. Yeah. 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 Um, so uh, he should, he should be reading regularly. Right. And, and that will give him another element to what he's been taught in uni. Right. So that's good. Um, and then, uh, my next, my path was then to start kind of, I guess, volunteering my skills for people who are starting businesses or even established businesses. And after doing that for a few months, I, uh, I was actually able to apply for marketing jobs and get marketing jobs. Right. But we're saying that, you know, that might be difficult, but in the meantime, he can kind of, uh, start to, 
hone his skills by reading and then finding somewhere where he can implement, right? So whether that's with a company, whether that's with your, you know, your other cousin who's trying to start a business, um, really just try and get in the trenches and apply what you've learned, right? And, you know, some of the books are not super um, practical in terms of exactly what to do, uh, but they will give you the, the, the uh, high level strategy and the way of thinking. And then in terms of the actual technical implementation, then, you, you know, pro probably YouTube and stuff like that would be better for that, right? So I think that would be a good place to start at least, right? Yeah, I think, I think, I think that's actually a really good idea, right? So now that you've done years of studying, do some more studying. Yeah? <laughs> but no, I think you're right that the, the context that these books gives is completely different. And so um, really and truly what you're saying is that learning doesn't end now that he's just left uni, right? So this is now lifelong learning and, and marketing requires that. So you're saying that he needs to basically get into this habit of where he's constantly learning. And then like you're saying, apply, learn, apply, learn, apply. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and, but, but also, bro, like I think I've never done a marketing degree, but what I would guess is that um, what he's what he's got is like one third of marketing knowledge covered, if you like. Mm -hmm. Right. And even there, he's obviously he's not like uh, as knowledgeable as his professors, for example. Right. Yeah. But that's one third. The other third is the Seth Godin stuff, the the marketing practitioners who've written books. Mm -hmm. And then the other third is the in the trenches you know, uh, YouTube ads and these kind of things, you know? So there's three parts to it, perhaps. Yeah. So I think that's uh, what, what, what I was thinking was what his degree will have given him is... Faisal, uh, you're very quiet. Yeah, the sound's quite low. Is that low. better? A mm, little bit. Okay, one second. Let me just check my audio. Uh, da -da 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 -da. <clears throat> okay, so that should be better. So what I was thinking... He, what the degree will have given him is kind of very broad base. Okay, this is marketing in general. This is how to create a video. This is, you know, and he'll do certain projects and stuff like that. Um, obviously, marketing, uh, over the next couple of years, he can decide on which area of marketing does he want to specialize in. But you're not going to get to know that unless you've just, you've tried lots of different things, right? Mm -hmm. And in the absence of any jobs being available, and I, I think the first thing is, is that um, the, the, uh, the people are always looking for marketers. That's the truth. Uh, people are always looking for marketers. But the, but the challenge that you have is, as, as a graduate without any experience, without any proof of what you've grown or what you've done, then, then you, that is a, a, that's where you, you find difficulty. So for me, for me, it's all about building up his portfolio of clients and things like that he's worked with. So volunteering, as you said, I mean, that, that's fine. fine that. You should definitely look out volunteering for someone. You know, he, you know, uh, he's maybe he's aligned with their kind of work or a charity, maybe a charity or something, or even a, even a normal business, a local business. He said, oh, you know, look, if, if, they, if he said, look, I can help you to grow your social media following, I'm sure they'll do it and say no if it's, if it's for a couple of days a week or whatever. So that's, that's good. And, but as part of that, he can start to then experiment uh, because, uh, because again if, if i if, again if, if just think about some of the cvs that were, people are coming come to us if someone just said oh yeah i've got a marketing degree um that's not going to be enough on its own it might be that okay you know what if they've got certification from um google or uh, you know or, mm -hmm. or a certificate yeah. from digital marketer or something like that then you know okay so they've got the overall broad base now they've done some of the, the tactics required. So for me, getting some certification would be useful. Um, and, uh, and like I said, the whole, the, you know, if they can understand the theory and, and how it works. For me, I, I think that where he is right now, um, the, 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 those books that you've mentioned are good, but they'll they'll continue uh, throughout, his, uh, throughout his life. I think that right now, he want, he's probably eager to get his teeth stuck into something. So this is where a project or something will, will be good. So, mm. Uh, volunteering or work just working for free uh, initially and it could be on a t trial basis almost like proving yourself so you can say look you know let me come on, i'll work with you for free for two months if it goes well then you can get then you let me um, then uh, we can hire mm. you and, uh, mm -hmm. and, and challenge yourself in that way yeah i wouldn't assume that you're gonna have to do free work to get a chance right so there might be a way where you could get paid a, a little or something because i yeah, think from his point of view Maybe he's not in let me make a lot of money mode, right? Mm. He's in like he's just out of uni, right? However, the fact that you're being paid will change the uh, type of work that you're given and the type of responsibility that you're given, 
right? Yeah, um, so, so that might help his development. You know, I was thinking that as well. Faisal, by the way, your mic is still way too quiet, so we need right, to. Okay, let me. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, so let one. Me if, if I'm, if I'm taking one off. Yeah, Muhammad. Yeah. So, what I was thinking, I actually really like what Faisal said there because he's added a third dimension onto it. So, like you said, I mean, like one really good thing is us, uh, like keep learning get the books and stuff another great thing you said was about finding a place to apply if you can get paid for applying that's great uh, if you need to volunteer for like a charity and stuff they would love to have you um, mm -hmm. and then it's the same thing when it comes to even like friends and family who are trying to do things like you will definitely know people that have a business right and so if you're willing to do it for free for friends and family you can actually mm -hmm. just go to them and say i'm, I'm trialing this stuff i'm learning i've just done a marketing degree i want to help you like they will definitely be open to it, right? Um, the dynamic that Fessel has given is very interesting as well, that if we look at marketing like a proper career, um, like for example, a doctor, you'll find the best doctors will actually go further down and will specialize in something, mm, you know? Yeah. And I think that this is something that he needs to keep in mind or she needs to keep in mind that, you know, I will eventually become this person that will be like a T-shaped marketer. Right. Mm. So we talked about a T-shaped marketer, which is someone who uh, knows a broad uh, kind of amount of different topics in marketing, but then has depth in these kind of uh, areas mm. as well. Right. Yeah. Um, and but in order to do that and in order to specialize, uh, what they need to realize is first, I need to like totally immerse myself in this. I can't be thinking about specialization like when I have applied nothing. Right. Why? Yeah, cool. Because it, it's a bit like I always say, like, you know, people say to me, well, how do I figure out what I want to do? And I said, well, imagine that you're an alien. You've come to Earth for the first time and you're at Nawab's buffet and you look at all the food and someone says to you, which one's your favorite food? And you're like, well, I don't know because I've never tried it. So you have to go and try and test different things. Right. And from those you'll find out that you like the cheeseburger more than anything else, right? <laughs> so from that perspective, it's the same with this, that once you get into a small organization, once you get to somewhere where you can actually apply the knowledge, you'll start doing things and you'll realize that, oh, you know what? Like, I don't like this whole technical side of marketing, right? Or I don't like this whole copyright side of it. Or I don't like this, I don't like that. And you'll start to discover. But part of that is actually really, really immersing yourself. And I would say, like, for the short term, kind of forget about specializing. Now, yeah. what do you guys think? Because there's also a benefit in focus, right? So mm. what do you guys think about that point? Do you think that specialization should come later? Do you think it should be no, I, So I think there's, there's just uh, an extra point I wanted to add. Um, so first of all, work him going to work for a charity or a company, um, he'll get other skills uh, such as organization and project management and you know, how to work in, the, in, in that kind of world, right? So uh, in, if nothing else, just that aspect of being exposed to that is, to is really up. useful. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, um, something, something I failed to learn. <laughs> <laughs> well, you suck up to us regularly, so we'll <laughs> pass you on that. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, so, I think that, that's useful. Um, with the whole specialization thing, I think a lot some of it actually comes down to him understanding himself. Uh, what, what has he enjoyed up to now? So, again, because obviously, we, we say all the time that marketing is not just uh, an art, it's not just creative, like copywriting and, and creating videos and content and stuff. It's a science as well because the analytics and the technical stuff as well. So which area is he more drawn to? And is he at that stage where he actually wants to just do more of what he enjoys and really wants, or is it like, would, would, you, would you suggest, you know what, if he's identified that analytics or whatever is a weakness of his, should he go and focus on bettering that? And for me, I think that at the moment, because he should focus on what he's good at, and 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 dive deeper in that. Get some case studies, and so, and, and and one thing we haven't actually mentioned is, um, if he has got some skills already, he can go on to place that Upwork or Fiverr and actually earn a little bit. And 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 you know he's only earning a a, a, diff, a, little, a little bit of an amount, but he's getting to like really like, apply his skills to all these random projects from around the world and stuff. And I think that's when that would be really useful. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point as well that you add about Upwork because, you know, obviously a lot of the time it's hard to, if you're in the UK, for example, like if Mohammed's cousin is in the UK, it's hard to um, charge an amount that makes sense for someone in the UK. But if you're just out of uni, just charge the, so those same prices as the Indians out there or the whatever East Europeans out there. Charge the same um, and maybe you might get some UK clients, US clients, and then 
if you can use the, for example, the fact that you're like a native speaker and stuff to your advantage and do a really good job, they might skip Upwork and just refer you to other people, other business owners they know. And who knows, you might start getting a little freelance career out of that. Mm, yeah. So th this is something I was going to actually move on to a little bit later, but I'm glad you guys have touched upon it already. Right. Mm. So like sometimes what can happen, especially with job hunting is that, you know, you can just be applying and applying and applying and you're doing a great job of applying. Right. Mm. But nothing's kind of coming uh, through. And so you still do that and you're like, okay, you know, an hour a day, I'm definitely going to do that. And then I'm doing a bit of learning as well. But if I want to earn some money now, like the fact is that I do have some skills uh, and then there are some practical skills that I can learn uh, as well. And I should be able to earn some money. So um, one of the ways we kind of just mentioned was going on Upwork and going on, uh, you know, these kind of services. So tell me some, something like uh, Fiverr and Upwork. If I'm someone who's just done a marketing degree, you know, like Abdul has some experience of working with us and he has some experience and exposure to this stuff. Like what's some of the things that someone like that who's interested in marketing could do to earn money on these platforms? Like, do you guys know of anything? Yeah. So, it, I mean, it depends what, what's his primary skill set in marketing. Marketing is, again, quite broad. If he really enjoys designing, mm -hmm. he could be designing logos here, there and everywhere or designing, you know, different graphics or whatever for people's projects. Yeah. If he enjoys writing, again, copywriting is, is always in demand and stuff. He could be writing blog posts, articles, content and stuff. He could even take on, on Upwork, he can become a, a social media manager where he's managing someone's Instagram or he's managing someone's page and he's coming up with creative ideas and content for, for that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. If he enjoys the ads side of things, maybe that's where he can, he can then um, uh, say, oh, you know, I'll manage your ad spend and I'll run ads for you or I'll do that stuff. So again, it all depends. This is why this whole introspection of what he enjoys, what he's good at, um, needs to be the first port of call. And then he can you know, put himself out there on these platforms. Just going back to the specialization thing and the T-shaped marketer, full stack marketer. You know, I, I really think that uh, anyone, no matter how good or bad they are at whatever area they've identified, I prefer this. You have to do a lot of copywriting. Like, mm -hmm. I think you have yeah. to. That's not a choice. You have to because every single area of marketing, you're going to benefit from that. And even I was thinking, Faisal, like he might benefit from doing sales, right? As a marketer, you benefit from doing sales, right? Because especially when it comes to digital, um, the two are very much connected, right? Um, if you're writing a landing page copy, you're selling, right? That's what you're doing. And so True. sales could be interesting as well. Maybe not as a first choice, but if the opportunity comes, uh, I don't think you could, you should see it as that's not marketing. I think you should, you know, uh, perhaps yeah, take well, that Marketing opens the door to sales, doesn't it? So they are in, in extremely yeah, linked in that fully, sense, yeah. right? Um, yeah. But yeah, the point is um, copywriting is something that should not be ignored whatsoever. It should be, in, in fact, should be prioritized. Okay. Mm. So uh, just to give a, you know, a picture maybe for those who don't know, um, copywriting, um, will, copywriting skills will be used in um, ads, writing ads, um, co content, social media content, uh, more Landing written pages. written content like um, blog posts and stuff, uh, podcasts even. Like the way that we speak on this podcast is going to be influenced by our copywriting skills, no doubt, right? Um, uh, videos like long form videos or whatever videos. Um, people, who are, people who are good at videos like YouTubers, I'm sure they would be pretty good copywriters like if they're good at speaking on video, right? Um, like you said, Faisal, email, landing pages, uh, funnels, uh, websites, all of this is copywriting, right? So it's an it's a essential skill for a marketer, right? Um, I, I don't actually, I guess it is the creative side, but um, it's, it's, it's the number one thing. It's the one thing that you can't say, I just don't do that as a marketer. You have to do it. And I was thinking even, this would be the dream. The dream position for someone straight out of uni that wants to do marketing as a career would be to go into a company that's not that big. Like let's say a, a, a very sales and marketing driven company with just like up to 20 employees. And if you could do three months in four different areas for a year, that would be the dream. That would be perfect, mm. right? So your so first three months- scheme. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So the first three months, you just do copywriting because that's the first thing you need to get right into that. Then you could do um, three months, the creative side. So that could involve some video editing, some graphic stuff, some uh, branding stuff, stuff like that, implementing uh, branding guidelines on different things. 
then you could do three months where it's all ads and then you could do three months where it's um i don't know like a conversion rate optimization or something like that right so there you go that's four quarters that's one year and after that you're really going to understand what all those areas are about what you prefer what you want to go like t-shaped on like deep in i think i think these are all really good uh, suggestions one thing i mean i'll also say is that you know if you choose someone who hasn't really done marketing before like a like volunteer for someone or work for uh, a company that hasn't done it they'll actually give you free reign because they don't mm. really know anything about it um, and that's like a really, really good situation to have. And like you said, I mean, like when you're in a small organization, you learn much more because you're expected to do a lot more, you know? Um, yeah. So I think it's really, really... And you can work closely with the experts if they yeah. have experts there. Exactly, exactly. So yeah. just just bringing well, it so back... One, on. thing, one thing I just want to add, uh, Mohammed, is this whole thing of working with businesses or charities or uh, should not be underestimated because the truth is, is that when people come out of, out of uni or academia they they know they know the academic side they know the theory and all that stuff then what they don't understand is how it applies in the real world they don't understand business and commercial awareness and what how what, okay what is marketing actually used for how you know okay they know how to do it but why are they doing it and that's where exposure and, and experience with clients and okay why are you trying what, 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 are you, what what's your objective what are you trying what do you need from okay i'm creating this design for you but what do you need out of it or i'm creating this doing this social media management what's the objective the, the more exposure you have, to, you have to that, that's when you then st- it all starts to k- click into place. Okay, right, that's why we're doing this, and you know, um, you know, uh, you know and the um, you you get to the deeper understanding of of, of what you're doing, and you, you you'll be better at it as a way. Because then, when someone gives you the objective, if you if you're T shaped, you, you think okay, it's more one way to skin a cat. The client might say to you, "Oh, I want you to run some ads for me on this." But because you, you, you okay, what, what's the objective? What are you trying to achieve? Well, I want to do X, Y, Z. You might think, oh, well, you know, I can't add this on the right route. Maybe mm. actually I, I'll, get, I'll get a better mm. result if I do this and that. Mm. And you You've can got actually a big add email more value. List. Let's use that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can add more value to the client if you actually understand mm. um, business in general. So I think mm. that's definitely some commercial so, awareness. Yeah, so I think it's really good because even us ourselves, I don't think we would, like if we had a choice between someone who's done a master's or even a PhD in marketing, right? And someone who's done like five years for like different companies doing stuff for real, yeah, we would take that experienced person, even though there's someone who has so much education, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think, I think it's important to do that. Just to bring the kind of conversation back to where we were, which is that um, if, they're on, uh, if they're on Fiverr, if they're on Upwork and all these kind of things, right? Um, like what is the kind of stuff? So, I mean, you're saying like, obviously copywriting is good. Uh, and the truth is first, like you've done a lot of hiring uh, and firing on, on, on these platforms, right? So um, copywriting actually commands good money, right? Like, so I could be, I could be a student who, if I've got good copy, like what kind of amounts could I be getting for a piece of work? So a lot of, um, a lot of them charge per word. Some people oh. try by word, yeah, or, or per hundred words or whatever. Um, but I try to a flat rate. Um, you you could if you if you're getting someone who's uh, from the UK or from the US or from Canada, they might charge you know two hundred dollars for you know a thousand words, hmm. right? Um, or or two or, or three hundred dollars or something like that. Um, if in the East, you might be looking at sixty or seventy dollars for 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 something like that. But then but then uh, what do you call it? Uh, and but if if you're uh, a, a Western company, um, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, skills you you're happy to you know get get a bit cheaper. Copyright is not one of them. Copywriting people often pay a bit more to get an English speaker or an English native speaker because it's just not worth the it's not worth the hassle and mm. of the you know it's a false economy in that sense because it's riddled with mistake and it's not in the right tone or whatever. So. So copywriting is something that even if you're in the UK or US, you can still make decent money because you're saying to me, well, if I got a good, good job, then it could like, it, they could get paid three, 300, two, $300 for a piece of work for my writing. Yeah, which might take right? you half a day or, or might take you a few yeah. hours to do. And, and, if you had a couple of those projects a day or, or even a week even, that's yeah. like six, seven, eight hundred dollars a week. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and the great thing about what I like about what you said, and by the way, this can be applied to anyway, that you might be thinking, well, I don't have no, no experience, nothing to show. You could actually just go and do fake writing, right? If you're a designer, you can go and do fake logos, right? Just think of a company in your head, be like, oh yeah, okay, uh, UAE tires. Okay, and just do a logo for UAE tires, make it up. And then that becomes your portfolio. And I think with writing, it's even cooler because 
you can express the way you write and stuff. Mm, um, yeah. So I think like this is this is really great. Like in terms of uh, real options uh, to go to these kind of uh, mm-hmm. different different kind of things that are out there. Mm. Yeah. yeah, you know, I, mean, I think it might be worth mm. well, it might be worth talking about the different types of uh, things out there because we, we, you know another thing we haven't really talked about is a lot of some people specialize in SEO. Right, and SEO has still got massive demand and things like that. So it could be that you know what, I'm going to go down that route because I know I can get clients at five hundred or a thousand dollars a month and just specialize in that one area. Mm-hmm. You yeah, made me so. think actually, Faisal, about the ideal might be actually working at an agency, right? Mm. Agency work as as the employee, it's known for being horrible because you've got so many different accounts. You're all doing different things for different accounts and uh, you don't get to like focus basically and and have that satisfaction Mm. of getting results with one client or with your own business. Um, But on the flip side, as a beginner, you're going to get exposed to different businesses, different situations, different Mm. circumstances, different needs, different objectives. So I think that would be really beneficial for the first few years of your career as well. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so when we're thinking about a situation like this, um, someone's thinking, okay, good. Yeah, I, I want to try and do something. So let's imagine now that I choose copywriting and I'm weak at copywriting, right? Like I'm just not good at it, but I can see how that could work well. Or I choose, uh, you know, SEO or something. What do you guys suggest I do? Like, do I just kind of go and read some good books on it? How do I know what are good books? How do you guys choose great books? Uh, on a topic that you might not know if there's any great book. So what do I do? How do I kind of get into it? What's the next advice you'd give me? I think the way I uh, did my kind of self-education was probably the starting point was YouTube. And uh, from YouTube, I just got to know um, the different people in the space. And then from there, I kind of was able to work out who was the best or who was really good um and who did i obviously connect with the most and stuff um so so although you've just come out of uni to to get good at a skill like copywriting i think the quickest like the most efficient way of doing it is by buying a a course an online course um especially if it has coaching with it or like some kind of review of your work um that's really good um books alone it's going to be difficult maybe to become actually good at it, especially mm-hmm. quickly. Also understanding the, th- the, the, the theory and, and uh, how, you yeah. know, the, it, yeah. it just it doubles down on what you kind of, you know, mm-hmm. uh, but, mm-hmm. but there are I think, good uh, books but, for what, what, copywriting, what, 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 yeah. like uh, scientific advertising, mm-hmm. um, the wizard of ads, I think like these are good. Dan definitely. Kennedy's yeah. Dan Kennedy's books, um, Joe Sugarman and all that. They're good. Um, it's just, you need to write a lot and you need someone to like give you feedback. And ultimately the best thing is to see if like the copy will actually persuade action as well. Mm, yeah. yeah. Uh, what, what I was going to say was, it was actually not related to what, what your, your point, your question was like, well, if you, if you're not good at copywriting, how do you get better? Is that right? Yeah. So with that, again, as I mean said, um, if you spend enough, you know, if you spend, you know, time following, um, like influences in the space, um, and or you start reading, you know, even you know, so best books on marketing and stuff. Um, the ones that are often repeated, you know, again, the, if there's so many people like talking about them and stuff, the, the, you know, there's no smoke without fire. It means it's it's often are going to be good unless they're like a marketing genius and they manage to game the system or something. But uh, ultimately, in which case, like, you should listen to them as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, but yeah. So, so that's that's uh, like that's a social proof or the con- consensus approach. Um, what I was actually going to say was that when you're just fresh out of uni, one thing that you have is you have time, you have energy, and you also have the advantage of um, you might be able to do things that people older than you can't. Mm. So, for example, TikTok is this mm. massively growing platform, and you might be using it like day. To, you know, you know, might know inside out. I remember this is the name of the Instagram stories a few, a few years ago, but you might know it inside out. And so you say, okay, you know what, how do I apply marketing and this platform that I know and, and, do, and, 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 do, and do TikTok marketing, right? Or, or, or if, if you have Instagram. And, and so it could be just like, you know what, I, I, I'm going to um, 
go out there and I'm going to specialize in something that I'm already doing day to day that I know quite well. And I'm just going to learn all the marketing aspects, techniques they are on, on this platform for platform only. I think that's, that's also a very good way of doing it. Uh-huh. Mm. So, so what I want to kind of do is, is kind of flip the script a little bit with this thing now. So like we talked a lot about these graduates coming out of university, looking for a job and like using Upwork and using other platforms and everything. Right. Uh, and I want to flip it a little bit. And I want to say, consider someone who's probably roughly the same age, maybe like very early twenties and stuff uh, or, or late teens. And they're kind of thinking, look, I've been hearing a lot about this marketing stuff, right? Like I'm hearing about people setting up social media agencies, people doing ads agencies. I'm seeing young guys on YouTube. Everyone's talking about like, you know, doing marketing and making a real income from it from a monthly perspective. So if you, if you met someone like that, or you were that age now, what kind of advice would you give yourself about actually setting up a business? Cause he's like, okay, look, I've done a couple of years hard graft here and there. Uh, I've learned a little bit of stuff. I know a bit of marketing. I've got a deep interest in it. I want to do something with it now. I just want to earn a bit of money on my own. I want to be my own kind of boss and stuff. Like, what do I do now? Like, what advice would you give me? Uh, because I don't want to go down the job route. Okay. If they were 90% of people, I would say uh, a very good route is to offer a service, a marketing service. And so you would need to uh, learn that service. And the good thing is you don't, unlike what we were just talking about, maybe you don't need to be such a well-rounded person. Yeah. Because your objective is not so much career. It's like offering a solution to someone's problem. And yeah. so it would probably be a combination of copywriting plus something else, right? Copywriting plus content, copywriting plus ads, copywriting plus, um, I don't know, sales scripts or whatever it is. Um, yeah, so I would, I, I would do that. And the reason I say uh, offer a service is because uh, you don't need to invest much you just, if you're young and stuff, you've got the enthusiasm, then you can spend, like, I guess what I, what I did, you know, I, I spent hours and hours every day, like learning different things, marketing things, writing copy and stuff like that. Um, and, and so, yeah, that's what, the, and you can make money quickly, high margin, like high profit. So if you get paid um, 500 pounds for your service, you can pretty much keep all of that for yourself, right? You might want to, reinvest a little bit but you pretty much keep it all for yourself and uh yeah you could get started very easily and uh, it can become something that that pays you very well as well so i would say that that's for 90 percent of people the other 10 percent who might uh for example be developers okay maybe they went to uni and they did computer science or whatever then uh, i would p- potentially you could do the service as well but potentially you can like you can create products for free like you've got the skill of creating products software products for mm. free right so perhaps if you're into that and you're also into marketing then you can be the the kind of the ultimate i think the ultimate in these days is someone who can write code and sell code you know mm. um so you've got that advantage that you actually mm. learned to code so i would start thinking of problems people have try and make a little, you know, MVP solution and then try and sell little bits of that. And, you know, that's how a lot of the, the big software companies uh, today came about. Developers who were in uni still or just came out of uni and uh, they were just tinkering and just uh, making mm. something. And uh, they often then uh, got a co-founder who was the business person or the salesperson or the marketing person. But if you have that in you as well, I think that would make you like a force to be reckoned with. Mm, okay yeah. that's really good advice so first of all, what about you same kind of same kind of question like what what would we do yeah i, I, I want to earn some hundred pounds i want to get yeah. start so, building so i would I, I would have said um pretty much what, what i mean said in terms of setting up a, a service and then you can go down that route and, and sell that service and, and and the great thing is is that first of all if you're in marketing you the offer is quite powerful because you're, you're so going essentially going to business owners or you're saying that look do you want more customers that's what marketing is, isn't it? And no, no one's going to say no to that. So that's quite good. And so, so you can actually have conversations. And also, this is a numbers game. So it might be you should have to speak to, or you have to message 50 people on LinkedIn or Facebook. And then of them, you know, 10 might reply, of which two of them might have a conversation, or which one of them might buy. It. So, you know, that, you, know you, you just think that it's a, a bit of a numbers game. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is that I, I, 
I was I was going to sort of say similar to what Amin said, but I was actually going to say you know this is a time where you you can first of all build up your own skills, and secondly, uh, if you're if you're actually a good marketer or you know what you've got to offer, um, you could partner up with someone who you know, I, 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 they all say if you want to, if you're looking for a partner or something, always partner with a marketer, right? Um, because and, and so you, you might be quite eligible. There, there might be someone who's got a, who's a really good technical guy, but he's not uh, he doesn't really know the marketing stuff. So you could actually uh, attend meetups, um, you know, LinkedIn or LinkedIn groups or Facebook groups or whatever, uh, and you know, and yeah, apart or, or some there's some of these Slack, these, these Slack communities as well, uh, get in there and and get speaking to people, um, and again, if there's someone that you're that you're quite aligned with in terms of values and um, I, you know, you can potentially co-found a business together and and you can go down go down that route, and then mm. and then what that does is that again it, it, it takes it takes some of the pressure off you making it a success yourself. There's two of you, and and then you know, you know and you know, and then uh, the, the the amount of learning that comes out of just setting something up for yourself, even if it's a service business, is huge compared to like just your own job because of the, the extra pressure that that's there. But then you know, it's that self self drive of okay, I've got to message this this many people today, and you know, I've got to actually have the calls myself, and you should learn through that that experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think one of the things I wanted to share with you guys is actually a lot of how like people who are starting out in Pakistan make money, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's quite strange there because like I spoke to some brothers and stuff, and we're talking about how like if they have a small capital, they can actually make a massive difference, right? So we talked about uh, this brother who you know this doctor from Pakistan who started a huwad started with a hundred dollars now worth nine hundred million dollars right um, and he was basically saying that you know a tiny amount can go a long way there because what they do is let's say for example um, you've got something like uh, uh, you know nuts right you know mixed nuts and stuff you actually get the mixed nuts um, the guys what they do they buy from a wholesaler and they'll buy a big quantity they'll get a very uh, simple thing that they call like a ready, which is like a cart. And then they just put all, all their product there and they go to a location. And because it's a movable cart, they just move from location to location all day, just selling food their product. Truck. Yeah. Like it's like a food okay, truck. Yeah. yeah. They're just selling their product. And if you think about the simplicity of it, like anyone who's buying the product from them could actually go to the wholesaler and buy at that kind of price, but it's just quick, it's convenient and it's there. Right. Um, and, and the reason why I think it's so important, because it's sometimes in our mind, we make business into this big, massive thing. I need PhDs. I need to do this. But it's just simply it's just, you know, bringing that kind of value to that moment. And I think that when, when these guys are thinking about marketing, uh, especially if you're young and you're starting out, you need to think in the same way uh, and be very specific. So he's very clear. He's like, OK, if you guys want like my son, while we were out there, he bought uh, a turtle. Right. And, and there's one guy who basically everyone knows in Jhelum. And he basically sells turtles, fishes, and anything marine stuff. He's got it. And he's got this route where he just walks. And so if anyone wants a turtle or anything like that, they're like, go to that guy. You know? Um, so in the same way, like what on I'm saying... On demand economy, yeah? On demand, yeah, exactly, mm-hmm. right? So in the same way, what, what I'm saying is that what we need to do here with marketing is we need to be <clears> specific. <throat> like if you're going to focus in content, then go content. And, and I'm saying be very specific. So for example, what you could do is you could say, right, let me... Google the top 10 restaurants that are in my area locally. Okay. So I might just, all the restaurants I go to anyway, like all the cheeseburger spots, I'm going to look at them and I'm going to see which of them are doing social media. Find one that's not doing social media, go to them and say, listen, I want to go and I want to do free social media for you. For one month, I want to do all your social media. If you like it at the end of that, then you can start paying me for it and I'll continue to do it. If you don't like it, you got free social media. Thank you very much. And you're off right? And then, or you could even do mock-ups rather than doing a month or whatever, then get to work on it. But if you just got one client like that and you said, look, normally people charge £1,500 for this, all I want from you is £500. Suddenly you've got £500 monthly recurring coming in from just one person, right? And you've got a big name that you've worked with potentially. Exactly. And then if you can then, but then what I would do is if I've done content for that restaurant, I would not go then to the doctor's surgery and say, can I do your social media content? I would go again to another restaurant, right? And do copy and paste because now I don't need to relearn everything because I'm in the same industry. And I think this is one of the things that we realize as well, that the easiest thing you can do is by focusing on that niche because your knowledge goes up, your experience goes up, your results improve, but then the work is easier 
and the credibility goes up. Same kind of thing, and the credibility goes up as well. So, um, really, it's about these guys kind of looking out there and seeing what are all the services that people are doing. Like, if you just go to something like uh, something like Upwork and see marketing, you'll see the whole spread of what's there, and you can be just be like, yeah, you know what, I like the sound of that. What does that look like? What does it kind of charge? And then start working from your network. Like, message everyone in your WhatsApp, every single person in your phone book, message them all, and say, listen, I'm doing this thing for free. And I want it to lead to something. Do you, are you interested? Do you want someone? And then really the, the whole recurring thing, I think like if you can get a service which is recurring, I think it's very, very beneficial. And I think it's very, very doable for someone to make, you know, a thousand pound a month from just offering their services and not working anywhere. Mm. What do you guys think? Yeah, bro. Yeah, agreed. Um, I was actually wanted to add that, but you've said it now. Basically do one service and one for one industry, mm. you know, uh, and I mean, that will help you get results, but actually get results because I think a lot of the time, uh, or sometimes the hype around doing an agency, a marketing agency is like, Oh, they're going to pay you like a thousand pounds every month and you're going to be chilling. You got 95% profit <laughs> out of that or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But the reality is you gotta, you know, you gotta deserve that. You gotta, you gotta, gotta keep gotta them. Yeah. You gotta keep them. Yeah. You gotta keep them. You gotta, and when you feel confident you can deliver results, that's when you can start charging two, three, four thousand, you know? Hmm. So this, this is something I want to come to in just a second, what you just said there at the end of me, right? But before I go to that, what I want to ask you is that when it comes to this whole uh, kind of like, uh, you know, charging and, and, and kind of making money from all this stuff and, and, and doing all of this, right? Like um, someone who's starting out, someone who's new, um, they might not have that confidence, right? Hmm. They might be thinking, yeah, like I've done the degree, but how am I going to now go and tell people that I want to do this stuff for them? Or how am I going to charge people real money for doing this stuff? Because I'm not even sure myself. So how do I get over that whole hurdle of, I don't really know it, but yeah, I want to do it. So, well, you won't... I think, I think, so the first, yeah, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is um, like, where can you try it where there's not that much that risk? Because again, if you have... Um, the uh, uh, a, a track record you've done it somewhere for someone for you know a month or whatever the first thing you, you know that you've, you've done it and you've actually got some results because the, the truth is is that if you go just oh, i've got a degree um most people will want results to be honest. I, 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 unless you're you're saying oh yeah i'm gonna help you out for free etc cetera, etc cetera. most people will want results um but i mean it maybe in the degree you've you you've uh, you've got some uh, really a uh, in really interesting project like uh, oh, yeah, what we did was that I created videos and I did this and I did that and uh, so you got something, something something to talk about so but, but what I would say in the first instance is that just uh, it's like a, it was like a, yeah, you know uh, you know in, in an interview in a job interview you're going to be saying oh they're going to ask you oh describe a time you did this and describe a time you did that and you have to refer back to your previous examples this is where you're having more the more and more examples you've got to work from the better, first of all, the, co the better the conversation will go because you, you know, they might have a, one or two questions and you'll be able to say, oh, wow them with your example. And then secondly, it's, um, and, and then you can tell this whole story around it. Uh, and secondly, your own confidence will go up because, you know, oh yeah, actually, I've, I've done this before. This is nothing difficult here. Uh, and the third thing I'd say is that, you know, was it Richard Branson or James Kahn or someone who said that, say yes first, even if you don't know how to do it. Win the business and then figure it out. Right, so that's what I'd say as well is that look, you know, um, have obviously have that certainty, that co that confidence, because you know, with a lot of um, lot of business owners, they're very busy, they don't have t time and stuff. Obviously, um, and and especially if it's like a restaurant and stuff, like if you're saying that look, I can help you to grow more customers and this and that, and uh, you know, it'll only be this amount, they're willing to give it a go, right? For yeah, they're willing to give it a go. Um, if you if they see that you're confident, you're confident, but you're probably probably going to be more confident than, than they are. Right, so if that's the case, you should just go in with that confidence, win the business, and and then to be honest, once you've won it, then it's like, okay, right, I need to figure out how to make this a success, and so and then and but then as long as you do you do do that, you, and you do do whatever you can to make it successful, and research and watch YouTube videos and, and all that stuff and implement, then then you, that's a good good way forward. Yeah, very good. I mean, anything else you want to say? Because obviously you were soft taught as well. You didn't really have the marketing degree behind you, but you still took action and did it. So anything you want yeah. to add to that? Uh, yeah, definitely. So when it comes to, you know, the example you gave of like doing social media content for a restaurant. Yeah. Um, I think that's easier one to feel confident about why, mm. because you can actually 
create a week's worth of content for them without their permission. You can just do it, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so I, would, I would learn everything I can online, maybe take a course or whatever, YouTube, whatever. And then I would create, I would pick a restaurant and I would do a week's worth of content for them. And then after I'd done that, I would go to some of the best restaurants when it comes to social media and I would compare and I would say, okay, is, is mine comparable even? Is it even on a similar level or are they like, am I at 10 out or two out of 10 and they're at nine out of 10? Um, and then just be honest with yourself, right? And easily you can compare and you want to be, you know, similar to those higher level things. And then you can actually go to that restaurant and say, and then offer it. And you've got the education behind you. You've got the examples, the fact that you've actually done it behind you. And you can even show them and say, look, this is something that I would consider starting off with something like this. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think that's like really um, easy and solid, but difficult part is ads because ads cost money, right? You can't just yeah. run ads and like get results and then be like, Oh yeah. What do you think of this? Uh, you could, I mean, I don't know if you got a few hundred pounds sitting around that, that is one tactic actually, but anyway, well, that's for another time. Um, so with ads, it's more difficult. And that's where I think I would lean more on having some kind of mentor, or some kind of course behind you. And that allows you to go to the restaurant and say, the method I'm going to use with you is proven, right? I might not be proven, uh, but this is proven, right? And, you know, and then just de-risk it for them. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I think having that support behind you when it comes to spending real money on ads and stuff, it's important. Um, but then if, if I look at my uh, example when i first started running ads i think i ran ads for sierra masters first that was the first thing i did um i spent uh probably 500 pounds over i don't know a couple of months uh on ads and i i, I built a whole funnel everything and i was running ads. i was getting like decent results obviously that's going to get you confidence and that cost me like 500 pounds so considering i did have some i did have a job at that time like that was doable, right, for me to spend mm -hmm. 500. So you could get some confidence just by spending 500. Um, but then also I ended up working with another business owner who it was kind of like he was just starting. I helped him a lot and he trusted me from that. And I guess it's because he was just starting and he was quite young and stuff. And then he was trusting enough to like, you know, get me involved enough to yet yeah, spend actual money on ads, you know? So that was another way I did it. So these are two ways I did it like practically. Mm -hmm. And then that, and then that second time when I ran ads for that business, because I got results, then I got more confidence, right? So mm -hmm. obviously confidence always builds up, but in order to get the actual confidence to ask someone to, you know, trust you with it, then I think, you know, having uh, someone behind you in, in the form of a course or a coach and that really does go a long way if you don't have the experience yet definitely yeah one thing that you mentioned uh, that we haven't mentioned up now is like you got confidence from your own passion project and i think mm -hmm. we've talked about volunteering and charities and all this other stuff mm -hmm. but actually setting us up something for yourself something that you're passionate about and that you really believe in and getting that off the yeah. ground and then practicing your marketing just on that because you're yeah. your own boss then, and, yeah. and, and yeah. it's somewhere you can always keep. Uh, if you learn something new on YouTube, you've got, so, you got somewhere to apply it to at least immediately. Yeah, and I, I think that's a really good point, Fessel, that um, a lot of people today, like, even if they're young, they'll be thinking, well, maybe I still want to go for a job, but I want to do something passionate outside of work, and I want to put marketing towards it. Um, so I think all the suggestions you guys have given are really good. Um, like, I mean, you were saying about bright spotting, like actually looking at what's working well with other people who are doing social media. Uh, it's, it's, like, it's like Picasso said, right? He said, like, good artists copy, great artists steal. So in marketing, we do a lot of halal stealing in that sense, where we go and look at what are all the other people who are running ads doing? What funnels are they, are they making? How are they doing content? So like looking and learning from others who are doing a great job, this is a huge part of uh, marketing anyway. So I think it's, it's really, really uh, important that you guys kind of, uh, mentioned all of that i think um you know something else to think about is um the way we're going to actually move forward because i think that one of the problems that comes up is people start to get bogged down when they start thinking about business with websites with logos with this with that right and they get into this habit where they're actually doing everything except the most important thing um and i used to have a formula i used to say it to you guys always right i used to say something solves everything do you remember what that was Sales. 
sales. Sales solves everything, right? And I always used to say this because if you're struggling operationally, if you've got enough sales, like you'll get what you need operationally. If you're struggling financially, if you get more sales, you'll get what you need financially. So selling is actually the heart of business, is the heart of marketing, right? And so if someone's thinking of doing these kind of services, the, the first thing you do not want to do is start, oh yeah, I'm going to start a business. Let me think about my logo. Oh, let me do my website, right? We need to have a, a, the opposite approach where we basically like, if you think about when we were, when we won our first ever client, you know, we won it without having a website. And that's completely possible, right? Um, but it's about like having that kind of, you might want to have uh, mock-ups of uh, sharing your work and this and that, but think about something like crowdfunding. Crowdfunding is you just basically verbalizing an idea in your head and it's like a billion dollar industry, right? Mm. So it's very possible for you to be able to communicate the value that you're going to bring without mm. you showing them anything specific or you spending that time. So I would actually yeah. advise that if you're interested in doing something like this, you should be spending like 80% of your time trying to win that first client. And then you worry about all the 20% yeah. of, uh, that's there, you know? There's, there's platforms out there like Behance and Dribble and all that kind of stuff that either graphic designers use or marketers use that... Um, you don't really need a website. You can just put your work up on there. And if mm. someone says, oh, well, I, I, want, I want to see what you've done, send them a link. And it's all like, you know, so they can have a look on there and off you go. Yeah, definitely. I think, I think you know, um, like, like you've been saying, a big part of this marketing is about learning from other people and stuff. So uh, I think definitely, like, if you're watching uh, or listening to this and you haven't checked out the free training that we do for Muslim CEO, I think that's a really, really mm. big action for you because what it'll do is it'll take the three of us, like the three of us crafted that together. We took our experiences, all the experience we've had in business marketing, everything. And we said, how can we simplify this into a very like small value packed kind of thing that will give Muslims a great overview of marketing. So I think like that's something that you should definitely check out. And of mm. course, you know, there's other things that we do with lots of uh, people that are all about this. I just wanted to kind of uh, uh, just summarize and then maybe you guys can tell me if there's anything that we've kind of, uh, missed right so i just want to share a document that we've got um so let me know if you can see it mm, yeah so this is some of the kind of advice that you guys have given uh in 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 today's kind of uh, episode for someone who's young someone who's interested uh in marketing or doing something in marketing as 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 their own as their own business or anything like that right um so when you look at that when you think about abdul the kind of brother we were talking about at the start and, and young people who are into marketing and services and making money and all this kind of stuff. And you're looking at all of this, like, do you have any other advice, anything else you wanted to kind of share or you would kind of ask them to, to think about or do? Yeah, I've got one thing. Sure. Go for it. Uh, it's called the briefcase technique. I got it from Ramit Saiti. Mm -hmm. And basically this is whether you're going to try and get some work uh, agency wise, like as a service business or freelancer, or if you're applying for a job and that is basically the idea is to walk into that meeting with a briefcase in the briefcase is your proposal for what you would do in reality for that person. Okay. So if you're going to propose, you do ads, then write some ad copy and get some, you know, drafts yeah. done and, and yeah. say, okay, the targeting would generally be this and the uh, cost would be this. And we would do it like that. Right. If you're going to uh, be a social media manager for a company, then go and say, well, what I would recommend is this. Obviously you don't have to follow it, but this is what I thought would work for you. Right. And just show that you've taken that initiative. Um, that's first thing. The second thing is that you know what you're talking about. I think that's the number one way that you can really, sh you can actually, show yourself to be more credible than your CV would, you know, suggest by doing this. And that's how I got a marketing job in a pretty big company here is by doing that briefcase technique. I came in, I said, well, what I would recommend is, you know, they ask you the questions and all of that. And then, I, and then they say, do you have any questions? And you say, well, actually I'd like to, pro I'd like to just propose or put forward my suggestions, my idea, you know, and you just pr present it to them. And I think that's something that most candidates don't do. And it's something that really makes you stand out and makes you, it's like, it's real. You know, it's like, I would do this for you. You know, it, it makes it very uh, concrete. They can, yeah, concrete. Yeah, they can, they can imagine what it would be like to have you on the team, you know. So briefcase technique, I, I really believe in that. Yeah, that's really good because like they say, seeing is believing, right? So if you can see that someone's actually created a real thing for you that you think is valuable, you'd be like, so this guy's not just talking a good game. He's actually done it and he can do it, you know. So yeah, I think that's really good. What about it shows you've understood the business as well. 
yeah, yeah exactly. Absolutely. I'm sure you're proactive. It shows all the right things, definitely. And and you know that that point that you just said there, I mean, that's actually a really important point. That fundamentally, whoever you're going to for a job or for any business, they want to know and feel understood. They want to feel like this guy gets my business, right? Because mm. it's like the guy who's going to be able to help me is someone that can actually uh, understand my business. Because if you can't understand me or understand what we're doing, how on earth are you going to add value, right? So, and this is why some people, like when they see job interviews, they think, oh yeah, part of it is just get some research and this and that. Let me just quote a fact here and there. But the truth is, it's more than that. It's about showing them that I deeply, deeply understand what you do here, how you do it, why you do it. And because of that understanding, I can actually bring you better value than someone else would be able to, you know? Mm-hmm. So I think like making them understand that you understand is, is a really, really big one as well. Uh, yeah, what about you? Yeah. yeah. So one thing I was thinking was, um, you know, like you mentioned the training earlier and one of the things within that is also got different models and frameworks and mm. stuff like that. And, and that's the benefit, really, you know, of, of doing a lot of reading and you come across different models that can be used elsewhere. So one um, thing is from the book uh, Ultimate Sales Machine, right, by a guy called Chet Holmes. And he talks about, um, so it's all about selling and how to, you know, how to increase your sales and stuff. But he talks about something called the Dream 100, right? And I think that that kind of, as a, as a, as a principle, it can apply to so many different things. So in this context... If you're looking at applying for jobs, if you think and say, okay, this is what I want to do, I want to apply for jobs, then it's like the dream 100 is like writing a list of the, the 100 companies that you would most want to work for. That like, this would be your, your dream. It might be Fortune 500, it might be in a certain niche. Yeah. Um, and, um, and, and it's about um, focusing, okay, right, forget everything else. These are the 100 I'm going to focus on. I'd be happy at a job at any one of these, right? So every single week, or you're doing some activity towards breaking through or having a conversation, or you might be messaging someone on LinkedIn, or it might be trying to have a conversation, or it might be, you know, um, doing something along those lines, right? So that you can apply that Dream 100 strategy, let's say, to getting a job. Or it could be to win a client. So it could be, you know what, I would love to have, uh, I don't know, uh, Nike as a, as a client, or it might be, not Nike might be too big, but you know, someone... CEO. Muslim CEO as a client, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, again, c- contact them um, every week. I'm going to show them uh, what I've got to offer and a value and this and that. I'm going to be in touch because multiple touch because they, what they say, persistence overcomes resistance, right? And ultimately, they get to a point where they can't ignore you. They'll get to a point where you know this this guy really really wants to work with. You know, let's bring him in. Let's see what he's got to say. You know, and let's see he also have some value to offer. And then when you when you do actually eventually come in, then like blow them away with with value and everything you've got to give to them yeah and i think i think that's a really good kind of point to kind of uh, kind of end on as well which is persistence overcomes resistance you know because really and truly if you want to be a successful marketer you have to go all out and you have to go all the way um you know the dream 100 thing you said bro is actually really really uh, a great strategy but it's more implementable today than ever before right? yeah absolutely because yeah. like you know 20 years ago 30 years ago you were like oh yeah that company i've got these 50 these are the top 50 com- companies around me where i want to work okay who are the CEOs? I don't know. How am I going to find out? Probably call them, <laughs> right? Now you go onto LinkedIn, you can find the top 50 guys, right? In the top 50, you could, I'll give you an example, yeah? Let's say there's an amazing job that's come out today uh, for a marketing role. Now it's come out on LinkedIn and LinkedIn's got the apply button. They've got a uh, read, we've got the apply button, all this thing. Like how many people do you think would apply for that job? Maybe hundreds, potentially thousands, okay? Of those hundreds and of those thousands, how many do you think will send something physical in. Zero. Zero. Okay. Yeah. So what would happen if I sent in, like I sent like, for example, a, a little shoe, like a small shoe, right? Like a child size trainer, one, right? Put it in a box, found out who the recruiter manager is through LinkedIn, obviously, got their company address, sent a courier thing tomorrow, which all it said was, I got my foot in the door. Hope you appreciate it. I would love to respond to this job application. Right now, if you've got thousands of applications come through, which one are you going to remember? Mm. You're going to remember that one, right? Now, I'm not saying that's going to get you the job, but I'm saying if you did that to your top 100 people that you want to get a job from, would it not get a reaction? You know, and this is an idea I got from I think Patrick but David was was kind of saying that, right? But there's loads of little ideas like this where you actually send them physical mail because physical mm. mail gets attention. That, that email and applications don't. And I'm saying if you do that and you're persistent to do that to different places, 
One of them will go, this is the type of person we need in our organization. Someone who thinks outside the box, the box takes yeah. action and actually impresses us and does something different. This is the type of person we want for a job. And so if you mm -hmm. apply that to any, any of your field, even if it's not marketing, there's so much you could like learn and actually do and then a get as well, inshallah. Mm. inshallah. What do they do with the other shoe? <laughs> they send it to someone else. That's why it's Dream 100. Oh, it's 50, okay. 50 pairs, isn't it? Like you just 50 want, pairs of shoes. Just, okay. There you go. Might cost a bit, but yeah. Cool. So I think I think that kind of wraps it up. I mean, I think you can do your usual great summary, inshallah. Yeah, so, so this was episode seven of uh, Marketing While Muslim. Like I said, uh, there is the video version on YouTube, on Facebook, and um, the audio versions on all uh, podcast platforms. What we discussed today was a bit different, which was what you would do or what you could do if you were just coming out of uni and you wanted a career in marketing. We also covered like if you wanted to start a business, uh, which is marketing focused. And... Uh, we went through uh, all the stages you should go through in terms of educating yourself, getting your first few jobs, getting that experience, and then specializing as well. We discussed that. We also discussed, okay, if you were going to start a business uh, and you wanted to work for yourself, what is the quickest way to actually make some real money? How can you use marketing skills for that? And then we ended with like how to kind of um, apply for these, whether it's a job or a sales opportunity, what are good ways, good techniques to really stand out from uh, the crowd? Um, I think that's the summary of what we discussed. And uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, we put these out on a regular basis. So definitely keep your eyes peeled in terms of on the different socials and platforms and blah, blah, blah. Thanks for joining us. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Shadu wa na'idha ala anta. Astaghfirullah wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.